I'm here today with the, at, our, at our, the ceremony for the Blue Star Memorial, and uh, the immediate past president of the Garden Club, Annette Jarvis, is here with me this afternoon. And she was there when the project originally started. You started yes. thinking about it. Yes. Could you talk about how you went went about getting this beautiful sign? Oh, with Carolyn Evans Carberry. She's the one who worked hard and went out and and dug up all the money and the sponsorship and everything for this. But she, we had started it together and and had thought of it and. We, it had come up at Federation, the Federation of Garden Clubs meeting, and I had brought it back to her, and we thought of it, and we thought it was a good project for the Garden Club. Well, th thank you very much for thinking about this, number one, and for actually bringing it, you know, to, to come to pass here. I think it's a great thing. Uh, we, we all need to honor our veterans. It is the only one in the state of Rhode Island this big. Wow. Well, that's great. So other towns have to start working to catch up then. Yes, they only have smaller ones on rocks. Okay, well, this, this is, is great. This is the only tall one like this. And this is one that everybody that comes into the library can look over and oh, see yes. and say, thank you, veterans. Yes, it Thank is. you very much, Annette. You're welcome. Now I'm here with our president of our, our town council, Jim Seventy, and his uncle, Harry Seventy, who's a real vet. He was at the Battle of the Bulge uh, back during World War II. Harry, thank you very much for coming down today. I'm glad to see you look like you're in pretty good health. Are you enjoying this? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Uh, I'm sure uh, you've had many years to think about. Brings back, brings back memories. I bet it does. I bet it yeah. does. And this is really all about veterans. Uh, Jim, you're a veteran yourself. Uh, right. How do you think right. of this day and what people have done? I, I think it's terrific. You know, the, 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 uh, the World War II generation, the greatest generation, uh, they're disappearing. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, uh, that generation is, is, is leaving us, and, and uh, the legacy they left behind, I think we need to respect at every opportunity that we have. And I just thank the Portsmouth Garden Club for putting this on. I think this is great. Absolutely. And, and everybody keeps pointing to Carol Ever Evans Carberry, who is the one that honchoed this whole thing, got the grants, got everything else, and yeah. got the sign. And, and it turns out this is going to be the biggest and best Blue Star Memorial sign in all of the state of Rhode Island. Yeah, there. So I think we should going. be proud we of that. We used to have a company reunion every year there's 175 in the company and we had to call it off there's only six of us left yeah well god bless you guys my, my dad passed out a couple years ago and he was a world war ii vet as well well thanks very much here i'm glad to see you out here today thank you <laughs> thank you we'll find a place to sit. okay now i'm with uh, carlton johnson who's also a member of our 375th uh, steering committee uh but, but he's also uh I'm sorry, give me your job again. It's a senior vice commander of the VFW Post 5390 here in Portsmouth and a retired Navy commander. Yeah, and I've been down to this VFW in Portsmouth. It's a real gym. It's a lovely place. It's a great place to have meetings, uh, which we've done down there for the parade, etc. What do you think about this uh, Blue Star Memorial thing today, Carl? Oh, this is a great opportunity to, to honor past present and also future veterans and I know a lot of us the American Legion post and the VFW post we've made contributions to the Garden Club so they could purchase the sign so I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for all the veterans and the civilian population to uh, up oh, he's got something going on right there oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's a great opportunity for the the Portsmouth population to come out and see what the Garden Club does and what they're doing for all the veterans. And yeah. the permanent sign back here is going to be on display for, for years in the future. So it's a great opportunity for yeah, people. And, and every time somebody comes to the library, they look, look over to the left and give a little word of thanks to our veterans yes, that, that paid the ultimate yes, sacrifice. And I, I'd like to thank you, the American Legion, the VFW Post, uh, for all your support to our 375th as well. Uh, we couldn't have gotten where we are without you guys. So thank well, you so much. Well, thank you for all your service and everything else. Well, it's, it's been fun. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm here with John Mangold. He's the uh, uh, commander of the Portsmouth VFW Post. Uh, John, I know you guys had a lot to do with getting this thing together. Uh, how do you feel now that it's finally all coming coming up and uh, going to go off today? Yeah, I think it's going to go off really well. Is uh, The Garden Club has put all this together, a great turnout, uh, a lot of patriots here, and I think it's going to go well. And the Lord gave us a good day in, in the weather. So. And, and I'd like to thank, thank you personally for all your help with the 375th yours personally, but also the VFW Post. Yeah. You guys are real stand-up people, and we couldn't have done anything that we're doing without you, so yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Doug. Yeah, and uh, actually, not to correct you, but I'm uh, representing the American Legion. Oh, American Legion, yeah. excuse me, okay. Is, uh, Carlton was the VFW, but okay. uh, Sorry. I'm here with the American Legion, and uh, 
on behalf of the American Legion members and the auxiliary unit, I'm glad to be here. Well, the American Legion is one of our major supporters in the 375th. So uh, again, thank you for in that hat too. That's yeah. great. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, now I'm here with Bob Edenbach, uh, the Newport Art Artillery Company. These guys are our big time supporters in our 375th events anyway, and I'm delighted they're here today. Bob, uh, what do you think of this event? Well, I think it's fantastic. Anytime you can honor a veteran who has put in his time and uh, upheld the flag and make sure the flag flies high, it's a worthy event. Um, some people don't believe in flying, keeping their flag up high. Mine flies high 24-7. Gotcha. So don't all these boikers. I've got one of those too, as a matter of fact, and so does mine. Let me just uh, go through and, and get everybody's name who's here. Yes, sir, where are you from? I'm uh, Michael Pine, Lieutenant Colonel of the Artillery Company of Newport. Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. I hope you're going to come to some of our Portsmouth things. He, he'll tell you, he'll give you a passport if you need to come to Portsmouth. No, okay, <laughs> I know it's a long way to I drive. I know you guys have a troll there at the border. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Just pay the toll to the troll. Let All right, us come well, thanks out. for coming today and spending your time with us. Hi, Pr Private Roger Grinnell, member of the Newport Artillery Company, and Ann Hutchinson is my 10th great grandmother. Wow. And I live in Portsmouth. So you definitely got Portsmouth roots in. If you got Ann Hutchins in your blood, that's great. And you, sir? Uh, my name is uh, Sergeant Major John Duchesneau of the Newport Artillery Company, and I live in Newport. Uh, I have Portsmouth roots as well. I'm descendant from Ann and William Hutchinson, and also William and Mary Dyer, who were founders of Portsmouth. So well, that's really great. So you're really historically connected, yes. then. John is also a member of the Rhode Island National Guard with 28 years of service. Okay, well, good for you, and thank you for your service. And uh, thank all you guys for coming out today. It's a beautiful day. I hope those, I know these things are like made out of wool or something. They are, double melting wool. Yeah, I know. They didn't, have, a, they didn't have it easy in those days, did they? It's called a walking sauna bath. Yeah, I, I would believe it. <laughs> well, thanks for coming out today, guys. You're welcome. We'll try to kill a few mosquitoes for you. There you go. On behalf of the Portsmouth Garden Club, I'd like to welcome you to our Blue Star Memorial dedication. The Portsmouth Garden Club, along with the American Legion Post 18 and the VFW 5390 and uh, their, auxil oh, their auxiliaries and four private donors, purchased this marker that is covered right now so that we could show our appreciation for the men and women of the armed forces. The Portsmouth Free Public Library allowed us to put it here, and as you can see, this is a park-like setting for it and it was chosen because of its location in the town, the accessibility to the public, and off-street parking so that they can stop and really appreciate what this sign says and means to all of us. And it's the beautifully landscaped area will enhance this beautiful marker. Actually, this week has a dis several distinctive days for the military. August 7th was Purple Heart Day and to honor the men and women who received Purple Heart Medals for wounds suffered in combat. And I believe it is the oldest military medal that is still in use. So I w would like to ask now, I know there's at least one that is here, uh, if there are any Purple Heart recipients, and if you could make yourself known. Also, tomorrow is the uh, Spirit of 45 Day, and it's the day that World War II came to an end, and we would like to honor that as well and ask if there are any World War II uh, members. I see one back here, and I know that there are a few more. There's one right here, Mr. Stephanie. We have one here. We thank you for your service. Uh, you will hear the history of the marker shortly, but I truly believe that I will never, ever work on a better project. So this has been very, very special for me. And August 10th, 2013, Portsmouth has become the first town in Rhode Island to install a Blue Star Memorial marker. Wow. Hey. So, it's wonderful. So we ask that you remember the many sacrifices the armed forces made for us to preserve our freedom, and we hope that you will enjoy our program. So I'd like to take a few minutes to 
for garden club purposes, introduce, uh, if you could just stand, our New England Region Garden Club Director, Maria Nahum. Our Federation Garden Club President, Sandy Tinnock. Our Blue Star Chairwoman, Candace Morgenstern. And uh, our outgoing and incoming presidents, Annette Javis and Sophie Cofield. So, Annette and Jeff, thank you. And I'd like to thank you for your attendance. And now, if you would stand for the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance by Portsmouth Cub Scout Pack 50. Very company. Present. Who? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. I would like to have Christine Haywood from the uh, president, uh, I believe, of the American Legion Auxiliary president. And she will be introducing our first speaker. I can write a mean speech, but my delivery leaves a lot to be desired. Just know it comes from the heart. When we were in high school, my sister and I discovered a treasure trove in the basement, letters that my parents exchanged while he was stationed in Vietnam. For hours, we sat and read, detached, unable to recognize our own parents, expressing love, longing, and fear, sprinkled with family news, tooth fairy visits, stray cats at the commissary, and a great uncle's passing. Back then, it was easier to shield your family from the horrors of war and to shield your deployed loved ones from the problems back home. Mail call has been one-upped by technology, email, cell phones, and Skype, keeping deployed service members engaged with their families and friends that same technology delivers frightening headlines that cause sleepless nights. My friend, Chief Wardwell, George, and I attended Beth Jackson's book signing a few months ago. We're fans, and I think you will be too. If my, it's my honor to introduce Blue Star family member, Beth Jackson. I don't cry like I did at that book signing, <laughs> but I might. I'm honored to be here today, and I would like to thank the Portsmouth Garden Club and the Portsmouth Free Public Library, the Rhode Island Patriot Guard Riders, American Legion, and VFW for having me here at this great occasion. Two years ago, my husband was serving in Afghanistan after being called up from the Army Reserve. I was not the one in the war zone but I remember thinking my job on the home front was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. With the fear for my husband's safety, the juggling of my full-time consulting business and three children, the burst pipes that always seemed to come at inopportune times, and even a swarm of bees that chose that my house was gonna be their new home. The bee guy later told me there were 24,000 bees. 
But then a phone call changed me forever. It was not about my husband, but it was about Ian, my middle son, who was then nine years old at the time and had been hit by a car. My husband was in Afghanistan and I was out of state on a business trip. Two years ago today, he was in a wheelchair learning how to walk again. During those long hours and days of that year, the American flag, memorials of war, and the blue star took on a whole new meaning for me. I had a deployment flag with a blue star on it in my front window. Initially, I was somewhat worried that I would be signaling to wannabe robbers that no man was home. But my pride won out and the flag stood proud every day. And I also started to notice flags across the island that I had driven by thousands of times and never really noticed. For example, down Wapping Road, there are four houses with flags on their mailbox just before the playground next to Sweetberry Farm. I don't know any of those four families that live in those houses, but during that year of deployment, their waving flags made me feel connected. Before my husband left, my children did not know one other child who had a dad in Afghanistan or Iraq for that matter. But organizations like Operation Military Kids here in Rhode Island embraced me and my children, especially Ian, my nine-year-old, to make him feel part of something bigger than all of us. I began to realize that I had spent four decades of my life taking the service of others for granted and often I had simply looked through the meaning of the flag or Memorial Day or a simple blue star. My husband is now safely home. As a professor by day, he actually was the keynote speaker at a conference in Seoul, Korea just two weeks ago for the 60th anniversary of the armistice. And my son cannot just walk again, but he runs and ice skates better than ever. And he plans to follow in his dad's steps as a soldier in our armed services. My family service was just a small sliver of time, but I hope to bring attention to all of you and those around the world who sacrifice and serve day after day, year after year. Today, there are over 60,000 men and women, along with their spouses and children at home, currently serving in war today, and often for multiple deployments. And generations before, so valiantly in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam as well. For these brave and selfless service members, many who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and to your families, I say thank you from the depth of my heart. And for anyone non-military who is here, I am happy to see your support of this event. And I encourage you to look around in your neighborhood for the family that might have a loved one overseas and see how you can help, even just letting them know you're praying for them. There is no better place than the Portsmouth Free Public Library as the location for this marker. Every day, because of the service of our servicemen and women, we Americans enjoy the liberties of freedom, education, and general prosperity that so many families and children around the world only dream of. In Afghanistan still today, the basic missions to help create an environment for peace include building a road so they can have basic infrastructure for commerce and free flowing goods, and building schools that allow young girls to attend, a library that is open to the public, especially one so fine as we have here in Portsmouth, is such a gift that we should be grateful for each day. Thank you all for your service. God bless our great country. Thank you, Beth, that was beautiful. Okay, they say to air is human, and uh, so I'm going to try not to be too human, but I have forgotten to do two things before, so I would ask that uh, we stand for Susan Russo. She will sing the Star Spangled Banner.
Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the beauty of this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you most especially for those who have served their country. We thank you for this opportunity to honor them, to show respect to them and their sacrifice. We pray for them, all who are in the service now, all who have made sacrifices. We give you thanks for their love, for their dedication, for their commitment to their country and to the high ideal for which we stand. We thank you for this opportunity and ask that you would be present with us in all these proceedings that it might bring glory to you and honor to those who have served you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry. Very few seats remain available when Frank Gribb gives a lecture in town. People attending hang on every word and always leave wanting to know when Frank will be giving the next talk. He has dedicated his life to telling the veteran's story, to make us aware of who they are, what they go through, where it all happens, and now he will tell us what a memorial means to a veteran. It is an honor for me to introduce a good friend, Mr. Frank Gribb. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to apologize. I don't hear very well between Vietnam and old age, and I don't see very well. I'm gonna do the best I can. I usually don't like to read my speeches, but today I have to read a good portion of it because I don't have a very good memory. The most important thing that I'm going to do this morning or this afternoon is I'd like to recognize all the World War II and Korea War veterans that are in attendance today. Could they please stand? I know we have a few. Thank you for your service, gentlemen. The second thing I'd like to do before I get started, to thank all the ladies from the Portsmouth Garden Club that just simply beautify our town. I know I run into a few individuals as I go to Reedy's Restaurant in the mornings, working outside here at six o'clock in the morning to make this community look so special. Would all of these ladies please stand up to be recognized? I 
I feel privileged to have been selected as a speaker today for this event. I'm still asking myself, why me? There are so many others in this community that are more deserving of this honor. Here's hoping they have chosen the words wisely and that they echo the sentiments of current armed forces members and veterans alike. The memorial marker behind me, soon to be unveiled, pays tribute to current and former military personnel from every service branch, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Nearly 240 years after the Declaration of Independence, members of the armed forces are still proudly serving to safeguard our freedom from past to present without their extraordinary efforts. We wouldn't be here today. Before the official unveiling, allow me to relate a story that I think will put today's event in perspective. The story takes place on Independence Day, the year 1957. The sun was bright that day, kind of like today's day. It was warm, but still quite pleasant. A parade of veterans was scheduled to march to a municipal location where a monument, marker, and square was to be dedicated in honor of a fallen World War II soldier. Earlier in the morning, the young boy's father told him about the parade. You should go, he said. Your uncles will be marching. Having nothing else to do as a 12-year-old, and because the event was close to home that afternoon, the young boy decided to go. Pedaling his bicycle a short distance, <clears throat> excuse me, up a steep paved road, he turned right and sped less than a half mile before reaching his destination. Leaving the bicycle in the gutter, he raced toward the crowd. Luckily, he arrived just in the nick of time. Standing in the middle of the road, he watches the military contingent march toward him. The first division consisted of middle-aged veterans. As the men approached, he recognized two of his uncles. Both were former army men. They wore beige military uniforms with the bottom half of their narrow black ties tucked securely between the buttons of their shirts. Their pants were folded neatly into their boots and were partially covered by laced white leggings. The men looked proud and marched with the air of invincibility. Each shouldered a Browning automatic rifle. Medals and decorations they earned during war were pinned to their shirt pockets. The silver and bronze medallions caught the young boys' eyes as they sparkled in the midday sun. He could hardly take his eyes off them. Standing transfixed, he happened to notice one of the flag bearers. Another uncle, not a soldier, but a sailor dressed in white. He was carrying an American flag. Within yards of where the boy stood, the column veered left onto a narrow street in less than a minute, the parade came to a halt. The actual ceremony was surprisingly short. A priest consecrated the small stone monument, an eight-foot pole with bronze marker, and the square itself. Then, a town dignitary said a few appropriate words. The surviving family member was presented with a citation. Soon, a rifle squad fired a 21-gun salute. As to be expected, youngst youngsters dove for the empty shell casings as if treasure. The young boy was no exception. Though hot to the touch, he filled his pockets with spent cartridges. Minutes later, he jumped on his bicycle and rode home. The young boy was affected by what he saw that day, though it would take years before <clears throat> he grasped the true meaning of the day. Today's event was especially momentous 
wasn't especially momentous. For those in attendance, the sentiments of the day faded rather quickly. Within weeks, and everyone in the town had forgotten, that is, except for the young boy. The vision of the marching veterans, especially his uncles, and the medals they wore was now indelibly etched in his mind. Sadly, it was not for the right reason. Years passed, and a young boy became a teenager, then a young man. No longer were townspeople talking about World War II or the Korean conflict. There was a new trouble spot in the world somewhere in Southeast Asia. Now a young man, and as several of his uncles before him, he was drafted into the army and called upon to fight in a faraway land. With the grace of God, he, like his five uncles, survived the ordeal. But his homecoming was far different than his uncles. There were no marching bands, parades, <clears throat> or flag-waving spectators. For decades, nobody asked, what was it like? Well, thank you for your service. Years later, most of the mental grime of serving in Vietnam would wash away. But during those ensuing years, the young man never lost his hard-earned pride. He knew all too well about the hardships of war while accomplishing his assigned duties and responsibilities to the best of his ability. As days turned into months and months into years, he never failed to reflect upon what inspired him during his time in combat and now as a veteran. Watching his proud and gallant uncles marching in a hometown parade and then dedicating a monument, Mocker and Square, to one of their own. Only now he understood so much more. The story I told you is true. I know because I was that young boy. About the age of the boy that was in the red hat here. He was about 12 years old. That's about how old I was. That is why today means so much to me as it should to all those who honorably serve and now reside either temporarily or permanently in this community. And what did I learn from my military experience? I learned that whether during wartime or peacetime, it is truly an honor to serve one's country. I also learned that it's more than medals pinned to a uniform that makes a veteran. It's what you don't see that is considerably more important. The sentiments that dwell in here and in here. And that paying tribute to those who serve, living and deceased, is the greatest reward that can be given or received for service to one's country. Today is a special day, and every time from this day forward, when somebody glances at this marker behind me, we will be remembered. What more can one ask? Lastly, to all our military men out there, the men and women, I say, let this marker always remind us of the exclusive fraternity to which we belong. We as current or former members of the armed forces have earned our membership. Let us always be proud and remember that, at least for a brief leg of the journey, we carried the torch preserve America's freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. That was very touching. Okay, uh, a few more uh, identifications of people that are here. Uh, would the town council members please stand up that we're here? Thank you very much. Also behind me, I, I want to thank the uh, people that are flanking the marker, and we have the Patriot Viking Riders who are 
to the side here and here. The Newport Artillery is right here closest to the, uh, the marker. And I, I moved this. This is not an oversight. I did move this because I thought as we get closer to unveiling the marker that we would want to understand the history behind it. So I would now ask uh, our New England Regional Director, Maria Nahum, to come up and to tell us the history of the marker. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. I'm so pleased to be here. I know Carolyn mentioned that um, this is one of the best things she's worked on. I really understand that. I was the National Blue Star Chairman for National Garden Clubs, and it's the best position I ever had. I think the most important, I think more important than what I am doing today. Uh, and it all began in 1944 with a five-mile planting of flowering dogwood trees along the highway in New Jersey. It was a plan to protect the beauty of the countryside, to welcome home the men and women who fought for our country, and to honor the many, many who did not come home. This living memorial initiated by the garden clubs in New Jersey was named the Blue Star Drive, and the name was chosen for the star and flags displayed in homes denoting a family member serving, which you heard about already. And um, I have one of those flags too. My son was a combat pilot during the uh, first and second Gulf Wars. Uh, he's still in the service, he's a colonel now. Um, they had a slogan to raise money for these trees and it was called a dollar plants a tree on the Blue Star Drive. Then in 1945, the program was adopted by the National Garden Clubs and a highway marker was designed to be placed along the landscape segments of the highways, which tra traversed thousands of miles across the country. Um, approval by state legislators and highway departments became necessary, and I'm pleased to say that Rhode Island received the first endorsement. And that was followed by seven more states in the first year. Now in 1951, the tribute was extended to include all men and women who had served, were serving or would serve in the armed for forces of the United States. Then the memorial and byway markers were later added, the memorial marker you will see very soon. And they could be placed in national cemeteries, veterans facilities, and uh, historic sites in other specific locations. I became the chairman for uh, National Garden Clubs in 2001. At that time, this program had lagged. There were not that many new markers being put up. I didn't even know about the program. Many people didn't. And then, as you know, in September of that year, what happened? And since then, uh, it just has flown. This program is busier than ever. Uh, thousands more markers are being placed along the country. And um, so it, it continues to strengthen, and it shows our appreciation for all those who defend our country. Thank you. I'd like to bring up right now Commander Carlton Johnson, U.S. Navy retired and senior vice commander of the VFW Post 5390 for the military tribute. Thank you very much. Uh, at the present time, I'd like to have all veterans uh, in the audience come on and kind of come around the, uh, the sign over here to continue with the program. Uh, we're going to have a few things that are coming up uh, very shortly. So if all veterans in the audience could uh, join us up here, I think that'd be appropriate. And then the Newport Artillery Company is going to uh, have a little sub, uh, ceremony also. Come on, Neil. Hey, Neil. Many members of the Patriot Guard Riders are also veterans, but of course they're serving a purpose here this afternoon. <laughs>
as you can see, there are quite a few veterans in the audience, and, and again, I'd like to personally thank the uh, Viking writers for showing up. Uh, when the ceremony is completed, if you take a look right in front of the marker, there's a grave marker that has been painted especially by a, a Portsmouth resident. A grave marker that has been painted by a Portsmouth resident with a flag in front of there. He wants to remain anonymous, so take a look at the, the artwork that he has done, and that will be on permanent display over there. The Newport Artillery Company of uh, Newport will, the Artillery Company of Newport will now fire a musket salute to honor all veterans who fought for freedom and for our country. Muskerman, vote peace! And now Sue Russo will sing America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. For purple mountain majesties, of all the fruits it brings, America, America, God shed His grace on thee, and from thy good We're going to move into the unveiling of the marker, so I would like to ask Annette Jarvis and Sophie Cofield to come forward. And I promise, I promise that I did not tape them so that they couldn't get the thing. Yes. Oops. Candace Morgenstern, who is the uh, part of the Tiverton, Go Tiverton Garden Club, will now give the dedication of the marker. We are here today to pay tribute to our armed forces. While we go about our daily lives or while we sleep, the men and women of our armed forces fly our skies, sail our seas, and guard our shores, ensuring our safety. They stand ready at a moment's notice to defend our country. We must not forget them. We do not forget them. We remember with every drumbeat on the 4th of July. We pledge allegiance to our flag and we remember. At the sound of reveille, we remember. And as the last lingering note of taps resounds in the distance, we remember. In remembering today, we dedicate this Blue Star Memorial Marker to the honor and glory of all the men and women who have served, are now serving, and will serve in the armed forces of this great nation. It is with pride that the National Garden Club joins with, Tiverton, with Portsmouth Garden Club to perpetuate our Blue Star Memorial Program with this marker, which stands as a symbol for all we see, lest we forget those who help to keep us free. 
Thank you. Carolyn, could I just say, several people have mentioned the Viking Riders. That's the Aquinnick Island uh, Motorcycle Group. Uh, they also do a, ver a lot of patriotic things here on the island, but represented here today is the Rhode Island Patriot Guard Riders. And uh, membership is free, and they're always looking for people to help stand in flag lines, sometimes on happy occasions like this today, but also very sad occasions uh, when one of our service members is being laid to rest or brought home. <laughs> okay, we, we have uh, Carlton Johnson here is uh, Colonel John Mangold here. Right here. Okay. And Karen Faircourt and Christine Haywood and Scott Jameson. These are members of the uh, American Legion and the VFW and their auxiliaries, and I, I would like them to come forward to accept the marker. You guys, you want to? Do you want to? On behalf of the American Legion Post 18, VFW Post 5390, and the auxiliaries associated with both organizations, we accept this Blue Star Memorial on behalf of all veterans. Thank you very much. We'll have the tribute of flowers that will be uh, placed by Sandy Tinnick, who is the Rhode Island Federation of Garden Club President, and Roberta Stevens, who is a member of the Portsmouth Garden Club. I think it's a uh, terrorist yeah. uniform. Yeah. I think benediction no. and now I'd like to ask Ms. Uh, Chaplain Michael Knott to come forward for the uh, benediction let us bow our heads let us pray almighty God this marker is to honor those that served and be a reminder for everything to be thankful of their fellow Americans that fought for the freedoms of this country. Even now, men and women in the armed forces fly our skies, sail our seas, and guard our shores in foreign places, ensuring our safety. Let us look forward and continue a lift in prayer these men and women in all branches of the service who have served and are serving and will serve our country in the future. Amen. Amen. have an impromptu uh, person. This is Annette Jarvis from the Portsmouth Garden Club. <laughs> I'm vertically challenged. <laughs> A lot. I was the president when Carolyn Evans Carberry started all of this. She is a very, very tenacious person. <laughs> she has worked very hard this past year. As you probably all know, and in, in all of the, the veterans and the American Legion people that are here, she has called you, she has wheedled you, 
She has done everything to ask you for money for every single one of you. A penny here and a penny there. Um, we thank you all for all of your donations. The Portsmouth Garden Club really thanks her. She has done such wonderful jobs. We cannot thank her enough for what she has done. And we would like to give her a rounding thing of applause and a little token of our appreciation. Because we can't thank her enough. Thank you very much for coming.